Leader One is ready to blast some stuff out of the sky in today's game, Killer Satellites for the Star Path Supercharger, and that is some spooky box art. Let's go ahead and hook up my supercharger to my Atari 7800 Pro system and see how the game holds up today. Let's go to the game. Killer Satellites was published by Starpath and carries the copyright year of 1982. It was programmed by Kevin Norman, who created the BMX bike event for the classic computer game California Games. According to the manual, an orbiting junkyard of dormant killer satellites has been circling the Earth for untold decades, but now these mechanical maniacs have come to life and are bombarding the Earth with wave upon wave of vicious attacks. Their objective is to completely obliterate all life forms on the planet. The invaders are destroying everything in their path and are now hurling at an incredible speed towards your hometown. The invasion has started. Can your hometown survive? Can the human race survive? Only you can save your hometown and life itself from these deadly attacks. As the test pilot of the only rocket ship that can intercept and outmaneuver these deadly rain of molten metal, you must destroy them before they destroy you. Killer Satellites is a defender style action game for one player only. You could select the starting stage at the beginning in increments of 5 up to stage 95. If you start a wave higher than wave 1, you will be awarded 1000 points times that wave number if you complete the wave without losing a ship. You use a joystick to fly around and the button to fire. The left difficulty switch affects your speed. You move slower in the B position and faster in the A position which can make your ship harder to control. The right difficulty switch affects your fire. The A position uses single shot firing and the B position uses rapid fire. But you have to be careful. Firing raises the red bar on the top. If the bar fills up your guns will overheat and you will be unable to fire until they cool off. Each level contains satellites falling to the earth, threatening to destroy the objects in the town below. You can locate them using the radar on the top of the screen. Most satellites take one hit to destroy, but some release another object to destroy. Later on in the game, meteorites appear. You cannot destroy them, but they cannot destroy anything in the town below thanks to the force field, but they can collide with you. Once you clear enough satellites, you will get refueled and move on to the next wave. You start the game with six rocket ships. You lose a ship if you collide with something or if you run out of fuel, as indicated by the green bar on the top left, or if you fly into the force field protecting the city below. Don't ask me why the force field destroys you, but not satellites. You gain an extra ship at every 10,000 points, but you can have no more than six at a time. Scoring wise you get anywhere from 10 to 90 points for destroying a killer satellite. 50 points for each object remaining in the town below after a wave, 100 points for completing a wave, and bonus points depending on how much fuel you have left at the end of a wave. Graphically speaking the game looks okay and thankfully doesn't have the flicker found in Defender on the 2600. Sound and music wise you have nice charge ditties and okay sound effects. Family friendly wise this is a basic Defender action game that would most likely get an E for everyone rating if released today. At the time I researched on eBay including shipping, one complete copy sold for $26 and some new copies sold for $60 to $65. Like all the Star Path official releases it was also included on this Stella Gets a New Brain CD which nowadays can sell for around $200. So what I think of Killer Satellites. Overall I'm not a big fan of Defender style games and this one doesn't impress me all that much. It starts out way too easy so experienced gamers may want to start on wave 5 or 10. Or you could try the insanity that is wave 95. At least it has a stage select. You also need to play more cautiously than you would in Defender, since if you go all out you will quickly overheat your guns, run out of fuel, or run into a satellite. I also really wish that the radar gave you an idea of the enemy's altitude, like it does in Defender. If it did I may have enjoyed this game somewhat more, as it does control well but in the end it just didn't do anything for me. So where am I going to rank killer satellites? Pretty low. I will put it over Sword of Saros, but no higher. So out of the 4 supercharger games I've now ranked, killer satellites is crashing into the 3 position. Killer Satellites brings Defender style action to the Supercharger and fans of Defender might like it, but I'd much rather play Stargate on the 2600 instead. At least that's what I think, what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Also please click like and subscribe and follow me both on the Facebook and the Twitter. I'm also a member of the Retro Junkies Network. At this time I'd like to thank fellow YouTuber and Retro Junkies Network member Willie from Arcade USA for sending me the Supercharger I use today. Thank you Willie. I'd also like to thank all of my extraordinary Patreon supporters who voted voted for me to review Supercharger games for the remainder of the month. Thank you all. If you'd like to support the show and gain access to exclusive content, you can do so by signing up at patreon.com slash Thank you for
for giving me a little part of your day, and I look forward to seeing you next time in the next episode of the No Swear Gamer. Take care and watch out for hometown force fields. Hmm, maybe my hometown is trying to tell me something.